reveal the divine Ka in the triad of the human soul and gaining superhuman powers. Your Christian friends probably think you're crazy, right? How could you start questioning the Bible and Christian teachings? Have you failed miserably by Christian standards to follow the rules and doctrines that are humanly impossible to adhere to? Have you judged yourself in a way that causes you to see yourself as broken and damaged because you couldn't live up to those standards? In this article, you will get a basic primer on the false Christian idea of a soul that will give you clarity on why you want to learn and follow this concept, minus the dogma and judgment. Most people follow Christian teachings with the idea that the reward is to unite with the Father in heaven, while many others just see the teachings as a bunch of rules that keep everyone in check. The idea of uniting with the Father has some spiritual truth to it. It's based in ancient spiritual science, not superstition that has no foundation of knowledge except to simply believe on faith. One of the aspects of early Christianity you must understand that's not well known is that Christianity was built on the idea that ignorance produced a much better follower of Jesus. In the book Gnostic and Historic Christianity, Gerald Massey states, Historic Christianity was based upon faith without that knowledge. And those who knew the least were actually considered and designated the better believers. In other words, the less you knew, the easier it was to accept the ideas of faith and not question or analyze them. The idea of the soul was one that Christian fathers deliberately dumbed down for its followers. Are you saved? As a Christian, I was taught that we have a body and soul. One is physical and the other non-physical and eternal. It was an extremely dumbed down idea that in fact is very intricate in detail, very intricate in detail, much more than I can go into in this short video, but I can give you the basics that you may want to research further. The idea of your relationship to the soul may need to be broadened. Here's what I mean. As a Christian, you were taught that you, were, you have a soul that needs to be saved, but in reality, know that you are a soul. It's not something separate from you. It's not something you become when you die. Your soul is as natural as the body and your body is spiritual as the soul. They're an intricate unity of mind, body, and spirit that we talk about as separate aspects, but really are not. They're so intertwined that in the science of spirit, they cannot be separated. Christianity really did a number on us to incorporate fear and control within its doctrines. Their idea of salvation is completely different from the ancient Egyptians. Christian fathers wiped out the idea of reincarnation and replaced it with ideas like dying and going to heaven or hell. Salvation was a soul being saved from burning for eternity in hell. Did you know that Christianity is the only religious system that has an religious system that has an idea of a soul that can be tormented in an eternal hell? For the ancient Egyptians, reincarnation was a reality. For them, salvation was the ability to be reincarnated to live another life. If you didn't gain wisdom and unite with your higher Ka, you could no longer exist as an individualized unity of Ba and Ka. More on that later. But there was no eternal hell. The inability to unite with the Ba and Ka was called the second death. You would simply no longer exist as an individualized unit. Since you are alive and listening to this, you are saved. Gerald Massey states in the Book of the Dead, Salvation is the renewal for another life. To be saved is not to suffer a second death, not to die a second time. According to the ancient Egyptians, the saved are the living and the twice dead are the damned. The ancient Egyptians talked about separate parts, but knew that the soul was analogous to frequencies. Trying to separate the soul from the constituent elements is like trying to separate a musical piece. You can talk about the different instruments that are included in the music and even how they come together to produce the music that we hear. But there is no way we can separate and dissect the actual music that's produced from all the different instruments. With the music piece, you can know the instruments that produce it, but the aspects of the ba and ka can only be known through their effects. What I am about to express here is the tip of the iceberg in the spiritual science. The ancient Egyptians broke down the constituent elements of the soul to the most minute detail. It's based on many thousands of years of spiritual science. According to the ancient Egyptians, there are three main constituent elements of a human being. These elements can be broken down further into seven parts. What this article will focus on are the three aspects that are connected to the teaching of Christianity and distorted by using the vague term soul. In the book, The Open Vague Term Soul. In the book, The Opening of the Way, Isha Swallow DeLubitz states, 
In the first centuries of Christianity, men spoke of the triad of body, soul, and spirit. But later, after innumerable disputes among theologians, was boiled down to the obscure simplification in the Roman Catechism, which states that man is composed of two elements, soul and body. Most spiritual systems break down the parts of the human being to contain the physical elements and the non-physical or metaphysical elements. They use different names, but are conceptually the same. The Christian religion dumbed down their teachings of the soul. They went from the original teachings of a triad to simply the soul and body. But the idea of the soul is too vague to really aid you in developing and recognizing your God self, which is the aim of the original teachings. Why should you invest the time in understanding the true teachings about the soul? Because there are those of us that seek an uncommon depth and the goal of many spiritual systems is to unite the constituent elements of the human soul and the body. When it is accomplished, you are able to live a life with superhuman powers. In the book Stolen Legacy, George G.M. James states, The staunch faith of the Egyptians, together with their mysterious forms of worship, led to the universal conviction among the ancients that Egypt was not only the holy land, but the holiest of lands or countries, and that indeed the gods dwelt there. You are able to develop what the Bible calls the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit when you unite the spiritual triad. But as Christians, you are taught that many of these gifts were evil or satanic. What is this triad? As stated before, Christianity oversimplified this idea into only two parts of the soul and the body. In order to understand this, you are going to have to do two things most likely different than you have before. You will have to trust your intuition. This is practicing Ma'at. Accessing wisdom from within. Number two, you will have to think as the ancient commissions thought about their world. In the book, The Egyptian Miracle, Ari Shwala de Lubitsch states, The pharaonic mind believed only in the soul, the only immortal life, a cause that cannot be resorbed by resistance and hence a cessation of duality. For the ancient Egyptians, the real you is the entity that animates the physical body. What we as Christians and other traditions call the soul is a vague application of a powerful concept. The comedic belief of the soul as the real you, when speaking about anything to do with the spiritual matters, is their orientation and not the physical body. This entity is eternal. It creates that physical body that is simply a transitory expression of the eternal aspect of the true self. This is all very abstract. But what I will do is break it down as the ancient Egyptians did. The Egyptians did. So here are the basics of the divine Ka explained. The ancient Egyptians had a much more expressive idea of what we call the soul today. I will use their terminology and define it with our modern terms. I will go through the mythology to express the same exact ideas in another way to hopefully give you a better understanding. The whole time you're, li you're listening to this, if you get a flash of intuitive inspiration, flow with it. That's your inner wisdom coming through to help you experience the idea, not simply understand it intellectually. The ancients had three levels of consciousness or triad to produce a form, be it human or a tree or an atom. Any physicalized form must contain these components. One is the divine Ka, two is the lower Ka, and three is physical matter. In our case, we'll be talking about the physical body. The divine Ka actually has two elements within it. The breath of life, or the Ba, must be present to animating in the physical universe. The aspect of the Ba is incomprehensible by the human mind. The Ba is the universalized, spiritualized aspect that couples with the divine Ka to create an individualized expression of the All, or as we call it, God. The divine Ka is what allows the Ba to situate, localize, or fix itself in the physical. The divine Ka is the container, so to speak for an otherwise universal aspect to individualize. In other words, like water in a cup, the Ba needs a container to have any form. These two aspects together are the spark of God within each of us and all things in the universe. The angel on my shoulder, the origin of that idea. The divine Ka and Ba then create that third or Trinitarian aspect that is the source of the human body called the lower Ka. The lower Ka is the personality that is born in flesh. It is the aspect, it is the aspect that can be affected by the human emotions. 
It's the aspect that gives intuitive impulses to you in the physical. It's also tethered to the experiences of the human being. It likes the drama of it all. We call this lower Ka aspect our astral or energetic body. The ancient Egyptians called it the shade. Just like the divine Ka, it's situated outside of time and space. To understand how the divine Ka and lower Ka work with our physical mind is the analogy of the good angel or the divine Ka and the devil, the lower Ka, sitting on each shoulder. The idea of the devil on one shoulder should let you know the analogy is a Gnostic and Christian one. But you can think of the divine Ka and the lower Ka as analogous to one being in the valley and can only see in the immediate vicinity. The divine Ka is high on a mountain and can see things long before the lower Ka and the fifth encounter them. Remember the scripture, the father knows what you need before you ask? That's how you can look at how the divine Ka relates to the lower Ka in the physical mind. The lower Ka can get blinded by what's in front of them, so to speak. It can get caught up in the world. That's why it's the devil. It can be moved by your emotions and physical experience. It can become egotistical because it wants to be the prime mover in your experience. But when enlightened, it can call on the divine Ka or the father for aid in navigating through the valley. Remember the scripture, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. The divine Ka is above the physical emotions and human experience. It is a direct connection to the universal one. It cannot be affected by your physical experiences. That's why it's the angel. The divine Ka is not egotistical. Uniting with it will bring peace and calm in your life. Uniting with it will bring peace and calm in your life that you have never known. One thing that will happen when uniting with the divine Ka is you will become more intuitive. It will give you knowledge and wisdom that bypasses the brain. You will get this knowing and it will download to you in an instant. However, it may take you 20 minutes to explain all that it means to someone. Connecting with the divine Ka is like building a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger the connection becomes. The force of the divine Ka is intertwined within all of creation. Therefore, it can have many levels and its different names depending on the level. The ancient Egyptian expressed the same idea in myth as well. Ptah on the universal level, Asar slash Osiris on the physical human level. The story of the Immaculate Conception is telling you the science behind the creation of, the, of a human soul. Aset or Isis turns herself into a bird, hovers over the mummy or lifeless man. The air from the wings represent the breath of life or Ba, that Asar becomes erect, the divine, the power of the divine Ka, ejaculates and Haru is born. This means that from death comes life. It's a cycle. In the Bible, this concept was stated as I and the father are one. In other words, the divine Ka and the lower Ka are one. What's the origin of this idea of the father? The divine Ka is called the father of the fathers of netters. The son as the face of the father, meaning that the only way you can know the divine Ka is from what it produces. The son is representative of the part of the cycle to reproduce and perpetuate itself. A way that the ancients expressed the idea of this ever coming son is Iu Lasa or Yeusa. The Greek Gnostics called it Yeusus. The Hebrews called it Yeshua. And later on, the same idea was erroneously historicized and called Jesus. The idea of the comedic science was to give you a science of being and becoming or evolving. Through your personal journey, you are to learn and unite with the Father who is in heaven. In other words, a place not of this earth. You can look up the scripture of Luke 17, verse 20 and 21 and see what that says about heaven. This means when you become enlightened, uniting your lower Ka and divine Ka, you will gain what the ancients thought were superhuman abilities. We might call them psychic abilities in modern times. They were aware of these ideas back then. The Bible calls them the seven gifts of the spirit. And you can look that up in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8 and 10 through 8. When you're able to connect to the divine Ka, you can then open yourself to spiritual experiences that are literally out of this world. You're no longer bound by the human body and the logical brain. You gain the powers of ESP, you gain the powers of ESP, self-healing, telekinesis, wisdom, 
the ability to tap into future events in your life and many others. Many of us already have these gifts and have been afraid to express them and use them. As Christians, we got boxed into thinking only Jesus could do these things. Or if you were connected to fearful circles, as stated before, those gifts were from Satan. In actuality, there are natural aspects of our human experience. There are abilities connected to the universe that anyone can tap into. Some of us are more gifted in certain areas than other, like having the ability to run fast. Some people have psychic abilities equivalent to a gifted Olympian like Usain Bolt. We can all run fast, just not like an Olympian. We all have the gifts, just maybe not as gifted in some areas as others. And that's okay. Just work with who you are uniquely. The point to understand here is that they are not some religious idea that only one God. They are part of our human expression. Biblical symbolic connections to the Ka. The lower Ka can get caught in an egotistical net. Symbolically speaking, you can be as stubborn as an ass or a mule when the ego is involved. The ass was a symbolic representation of the ego in Egyptian mythology. Didn't Jesus ride in on an ass in the Bible? It's a symbolic reference to the ego being in control. The ancient Egyptians viewed the body as a net that the soul can get captured in. The lower cock can get caught in the net of the reincarnation cycle because it can never rise above the tendencies of the ego and the physical mind. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In other words, help them rise above their ego. Are you getting the deeper symbolic ideas being expressed in the Bible beyond the superstitious worship? One must connect lower Ka and unite with the Father or the Divine Ka. There is so, so much more to you than your physical body. You are the universe expressing itself in human form for a short time. You are superhuman. As said before, this is more of a primer on this knowledge. It's much more intricate than I can put forth here. My hope is that you will share what you are learning with those that are seeking due to the pain and confusion they are living in. Humanity needs healing from doctrines that have caused so much fear, guilt, and shame. This is Reginald Ku 